well we're back some of the other YouTube channels jump out and say hello YouTube and all that kind of stuff and I think that's pretty cool it's enthusiastic but I'm an old man I kind of want to get right to it when I have something to say and sometimes it's really hard to gin up something that actually is interesting not that I feel like I have to and then there's sometimes where it comes kind of easy and it's really easy to talk about what's on your mind. Well, I really didn't have a lot to talk about. But I just got back from a trip and I was down in Florida for a while. Um, was not able to do any chainsaw related things, obviously. And when we got back, the contrast was rather shocking. And I posted a couple of videos because I figured it's one of those actions speak louder than words things you can see what we did in the video there's no sense in talking about it because believe it or not i'm a man of few words most of the time then thought about it some more and realized that this was a fairly significant learning experience for me going down there and fishing in that way and while many of you guys are very experienced in those kinds of trips and those kinds of endeavors some aren't and had I known some of the things I know now I probably would have done some things a little different and would have saved myself some money you know it kind of begs the, the question well would the fishing gear that I like to use here actually work down there in Florida so that's sort of a question number one do you pack your own gear and you know something it actually depends it really does we went on a charter salt based charters captain Mike Ziegler he was awesome and I I'm mainly a chainsaw type of a guy but the people who watch our channel or are kind of doers small business owners people who work in the outside cutting trees doing lawns and things like that this guy right here, you understand him and he understands you. I highly recommend this guy because he's been in our world. That was one of the best parts of the trip for me. And that fellow taught me a lot. He taught us about fishing offshore, not far offshore, not deep, but in the shallow waters off the western coast of Florida. And we caught things like sea bass and speckled sea trout and reds and snappers and he called them grunts and just a variety of fish and it was a lot of fun and he spent a lot of time making sure that the gear worked he was always very attentive in some cases pulling the fish off the hooks for him just basically made it where it was a good time and uh, he hustled all day long and cut the fish up at the end of the day we had a, a lot of meals a couple of things relative to tackle um, and I'm not quite sure how to get into this because obviously saltwater fishing and offshore fishing is a lot different than what I do streams and lakes so I think the first thing I want to do is just briefly cover um, some things that I would absolutely suggest you have if you decide to go down to Florida and whether you're on a friend's boat or you're rent a boat or you do a fishing charter just pay a little attention if you haven't been down there before of course if you have you've probably progressed past this and have your own technique to deal with it we were out all day this guy when you go fishing you're going fishing and it's an all-day event the toilet is a step at the back of the boat into the sea you know what I'm saying there's no cover so you have to be prepared for the sun and a little bit of wind. Obviously a good set of glasses polarized is a very, very good idea. And since that boat moves right along, something to keep them on your head. That's good if it's turned around like that, because if it's turned around like this, facing the direction you're going, it's gonna be off in a heartbeat. Now this is number two. And what this is is like a sock, and you pull this over your head and you can pull it up around your ears and cover your neck and things like that. Now you might think, ah, oh, you know something, I don't want to mess with that. Trust me. 
if you haven't been in the sun all your life and you go down there for the first time, this thing right here, along with a good hat, is a lifesaver. Um, it definitely extended the day for us because we did not get sunburn. That along with a, with a good sunblock. I know this sounds like a lecture. Yeah, I guess in a sense it is. Pants. These Columbia pants, they work beautifully. And you can zip off the lowers as they come off. So you can take them off, and then as the sun begins to eat at you, you can put them back on for protection. Also, for me, that was very, very important. The key for me was the, the, uh, the, the lower leg that you can, you can zip off and remove. What do you think, this would work? Well, guess what? The tag never came off it because that'd last for about 10 seconds. As soon as he got up on plane, that, that hat would be out there being a buoy. So no, don't take anything like that. Yep, we were there. Okay. The fishing rigs that he used out there an awful lot were, you know, these guys. This kind of thing. Jig heads with... A variety of different brands of plastic, usually in the shrimp variety. And the other thing he used a lot, and I also subsequently used for shore fishing, was just shrimp. Again, on jig heads. But also these things, these power baits, they work great. This was a Berkeley. And on this thing right here, I caught a whole bunch of catfish. Never would have thought, but I guess there's catfish down there too. But the jig head arrangement with these bobbers, these ones that slide and pop a little bit. When you snap with your rod, you sort of flick the tip, they kind of pop. And he was explaining that that actually attracts the sea bass. We caught a crap load of fish with this exact setup with the jig heads. So these things, of course I'll never use them up here, but I brought these back just to remind me of what worked down there offshore. And that was pretty much a staple. When all the lures uh, failed, these went out and caught fish. And I could only make the analogy for my kids, like the, uh, the shrimp that we used on the jig heads, was kind of like using worms up here, you know? It's like that lowest common denominator when all else fails, live bait works. I got these at Walmart for like $9. And of course, a good set of glasses, a sunblock, that's obvious, a sunblock. Those things really are almost required in my mind if you're going to spend a day in a boat and you've got a background like mine where you're kind of fair skinned and live in the north. You know, of course, I learned what the difference between a Yankee and a damn Yankee is. A couple of other things that actually turned out to be surprisingly useful I got these aluminum pliers. They've got these little steel inserts that screwed on there at Walmart, and they're another $10 item. And these turned out to be so handy. I ended up leaving one on the boat. I got a couple for the kids and one for myself. And it, I don't know, you might see it in my video, but it turned out everybody used them for both removing hooks, but cutting line, just doing a variety of things. So this was not necessary, but it was really handy. Of course, my equivalent for the north was this, but these have now been obsoleted because this is lighter, they work beautifully. I thought this was a very uh, handy little purchase. Maybe you can read who makes it. Walmart. I wanted to cover that. The style of fishing is different, obviously. Um, didn't do a whole lot of, of, uh, of fishing like you do up here. And what he had done was he brought us out into the shallow area off the shoreline. And he was looking for places that had sand. And he was looking for places that had rock. And where the sandy areas were, that's where the sea trout were. We worked around the rocks. And I got a bunch of flounder and a bunch of those grunts and a bunch of other fish there. And then he brought us around to those. They're like islands. And uh, I'm not sure if they're islands or reefs. In time of day, based on the tide, is where he had to find the fish there. It was a tidal type thing. All this stuff was new to me. 
but having a person like this who really knows his stuff puts you on the fish and you're successful and should you bring your wife or you bring some kids that haven't put a lot of time in fishing he basically pushed stuff over the edge to make sure they had a good time can't say enough about the guy i was just very impressed and made a a, a lasting impression on my kids who were involved and, and myself so i'm going to transition a little bit because now i'm back up in new york and you know something? I'm almost glad to be home. I mean, I enjoy Florida, but it's hot as hell down there. And I'm just more used to this 55 degree weather. I'm sorry, I'm up here in the Arctic Zone, New York State. And did I miss these rods? Not really, because in his case, he had actually very good gear. He had pen brand reels. He had uh, the Shimano's. You know, the over $100 class Shimano's and pens. But his gear was, was really good. There's no sense in bringing your stuff, especially if it's freshwater related or freshwater oriented gear down to the salt water. It's not going to help the gear and you're not going to get a better fishing experience because the good charters like, he, like this one here, they have that gear. It's all set up for you. Just go fish. Learn about fishing versus about gear. Now, of course, there's the diehards who have their own special things, and it's as much about the gear as it is about the fishing. Well, okay, that's an exception. He didn't mind if you, if you brought a rod and reel on. I'm going to try this thing up here. You know, I've had terrible luck down there in the Pungo River, in the, down there in North Carolina, my father-in-law's place. I think this setup, because the water is, is similar, that's another thing. Um, the, sh the water the water down there where we fished was really shallow and I guess that's pretty common on the western side of Florida and that also alters the way you do fishing and the way you do boating when that tide is down it is down it, it, unless you know the waters you're probably not going to want to be out there with your own boat even with a rental boat you better be careful and pay attention to the navigation maps because it's really really easy to find shallow water because it's everywhere Yet again, another reason why at least spend a day, if you bring up your own boat or, or plan on renting a boat, spend at least a day with a guy with a charter so you can start learning how that, um, that environment is down there. Save yourself a lot of hassle and a lot of money. Hmm. So I want to transition. It was an experience, and I haven't processed all that I learned, but it was, it was a lot, and I thank Captain Mike Ziegler for that. And my kids, they learned a lot. Very, very worthwhile endeavor to go down and do that. I happen to like that area of Florida and that area of the Gulf more so than I like the Atlantic side, just me. And Homosassa, the area, we had a hard time finding decent motels. They were pretty much booked. We rented a house is what we did. And I would suggest if you have the resources to take that approach because it gives you a lot more latitude. Um, we had rented a house that was, was big enough to handle 10 people, and that was what we did instead of a hotel. It was a little pricey, but it was, it was definitely worth the, the uh, freedom and latitude. But anyway, this year fishing, I've pretty much boiled down to this rig that I had come up with last year, and I did a couple of reviews on it. This is changing gears. And this was a speed spin lose on the Halo Day rod, but I ended up keeping the 6.6 .6 or the 6 foot 6 inch over the 7 footers. It was lighter and I cast it just as well, just as an overall package. This combination of lose SG300 and Halo uh, Starlight rod was, was beautiful. So I kept it. I did not give it away. I did not retire that that rod and reel. For that matter, it's going to be where I start this year. And probably until it wears out or gives me a reason not to use it, it will be my primary rod and reel. The competition is this Lose Speed Spin. It's a TLP 3000. When I had bought it, I had in my mind that it would have uh, um, brack water and saltwater use. So this one here is going to be my 
I guess, comparison. Because this rig right here, the list price of that rod was like $50, and the reel was, I don't know, $40 or $50. So basically this combination here is a $75 to $100 combination. Works beautifully. Have a lot of fun. You don't think about the, the equipment with something that works that well. You think about the fishing. Combination here is that uh, this is a Shimano Kimura rod, and I guess you could consider it not a high-end rod, but it's a better, it's a mid-range, a better rod. And basically, it's a medium. They call it a fast action. It's a graphite rod, 6.8 inches, not 6.6, it's 6.8, so it's a little bit longer than the Halo. Today what I'm going to do, well, because it's the first day back from, from Florida, um, and it's a little windy, a little breezy, it's cold, what a contrast it was to the 90 plus degrees down there. I'm just going to tie on a couple of spinners and a couple of uh, Rapalas and go out there and see if I can't catch a fish. And maybe give my first impression of that Luz TLP 3000 that I spent a hundred bucks on. I don't know if I'm going to add another reel this year. I might just focus on fishing different places. We have a couple of boats in the mix, a couple of aluminum boats this year, and if something strikes my interest, well yeah, maybe we'll buy some more gear, but um, I'm, really, I'm really kind of stuck on those Luz. Observation number one is that the halo rod for me is easier to string up. I put a number three Vibrix on there. It's one I've had for a year or two. Therefore, it's discolored. And, of course, I have the hooks all de-barbed and all that. But it's easier to, to rig up and string the line because the guys are bigger. Now, I understand that that's not necessarily a good thing from a casting perspective. They put an awful lot of time and effort trying to get those guys tiny on these more expensive rod and reels. I put a number six Martin on this one. Now, this probably isn't the best day for fishing. We just had a rainstorm. So the fish are probably pretty well fed. Well, this first cast. I hope he shakes off. It's just a little guy. But one of the things I like about this combination right here, the Luz SG and the, uh, the Halo, it's very, very light. The rod is light and the reel is not very heavy either. So the casting and just manipulation of the rod and reel is, is quite easy. Plus it's fast, like I said last year, so I can hit the water moving and keep that spinner from dropping down into the weeds, which on this pond is actually quite quite important. Here we got a weed or a fish. Okay, I'm gonna bring him in. See, I gotta keep pressure on him, otherwise he's just gonna shake himself right loose. So this will be the third hooking. Let's see if he stays on. And this little guy. The bottom line is it works beautifully, still does, and it's still smooth. It's still pretty fast. It's a little dirty. It needs to get cleaned. But the thing I like about this rod and reel combination is how easy it is to cast, how easy it is to place the lure. I like the higher gear ratio um, to help keep the spinners up out of the weeds. And I like the action of the rod because it helps me keep that hook set in the fish even though I have the barbs off the hooks. So I can pull them in like that pretty much at will, you know. So let's try the other rod and reel. Now this has got a Panther Martin. I've caught a lot of fish on these. It's a little bit lighter. The feel is different. It doesn't have that foam back here so you're right on the rod. Um, at first blush, I'm not quite as comfortable with the rod. Although it obviously, and look at that, here's my first tangle. That's not necessarily a, a, a real problem, that could be the, the line. 
What I have on this is the Berkeley. It's low visibility. And I can't believe that the the bale and the spool arrangement and the way it oscillates in there is any less sophisticated than the another one. See these little guys right here, since I have the barbs on the hooks, they're coming in. On the other one, they would have shook off. There he goes. Maybe you're not going to believe this, but my first impression is I like that reel better than the other one, but I like the other rod better than this one. First impression. But by the end of summer, it may have a completely different opinion. Obviously casts quite well. Another minnow. Another one. You know what this tells me? Is I need to get a Rapala on one of these rods and start getting some bigger fish. Another bait fish. Oh my god, just one after another. Which means there are bigger fish in there somewhere. Another one, probably another bait fish. We were coming here fishing for minnows to go hack up and use for bait. This pond's excellent right now. A little more of a fish this time. No, he's just an aggressive one. How about an aggressive bait fish? It's like catch catching sunnies. Don't bump there. Good fish. You just saved your own ass right there, buddy. Keeping that mouth wide open so I can get it out of there. I'm going to stick with this outfit right here. I'm kind of liking the reel a lot. All right. Let's see how it deals with my Rapala that I've clipped half the damn shanks off the hooks. And yes, I can place it. So I like the action of this rod. It does cast very nicely as it should for the price. Those little tiny guides up there actually work. It's the handle and the seat that I don't like. And that's just my first impression. Remember, by the end of summer, this might be my favorite out outfit. But my first impression is, yeah, it's a better reel than the other one. It's just smoother. Well, it better be for the price difference. Oop. You see that? I don't know if that's on film. You got a minnow trying to go after the, the lure, which is the same size as him. But what this is going to do is see how that reel deals with I think this is line is junk even though it's more expensive I don't like the line at all one thing I can tell you this rod is really really sensitive it really transmits feedback very well maybe even better than the halo which is one of the things I really liked about that rod was the feedback yeah we got a fish come on buddy so we can land it. That was fish. Not quite a pound, but it was a real bass. So we have now been successful with this operation, with this rod and reel combination. That was a decent fish for this pond. Oh, got another one. Oh, he shook off. That was another good sized fish out there. Oh, got another one. So the big one shook off and the little one was right behind it. That's why I like to have my hooks debarbed because Situations like that, it's easy to get it out of the fish, you know. So that's actually a nice combination. My first impression, remember this is the beginning of the summer, is I like the rod, the action, I like the way it casts, I really like the feel. I love that reel. I do like that reel better than my SG300. And my first impression is absolutely worth the money, you know. In terms of the price difference the only thing I'm 
struggling to get my hands around, no pun intended, is I'm not sure I like a rod that's with that kind of a seat. And that's a personal preference thing, but I like the seat on the halo rod better. And jury's out yet on the smaller guides. It obviously casts well, and that might be part of the reason. It's actually turning out to be a good day for fish. I haven't put them all on camera. I put the minnows on, and I put the two, oh, I don't know, smaller bass. They're like three-quarter pounders. One was like a half pounder. And, uh, but I've caught a few others. And I'm still kind of with my head in Florida. And to be perfectly honest with you, I like fishing this better. I don't need a boat. I'm not sweating my ass off. I'm not getting sunburned. When I was fishing on the shoreline, um, caught a bunch of catfish. And I'm not a fan of catfish. They put a good bite. A couple of those catfish were pretty big, actually. So, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that was really good fishing. Yeah, this is a good casting rod. This is actually quite a nice combination right here. That is nice. Um, I'd say the only thing I like about the Halo better, like I said three times already, is that handle. But that is a better reel. Does it mean I'm going to obsolete my Halo in, in uh, SG300? Hell no. What it really means is I've got two that I want to run. Because what happened with the other rigs, and I, I don't know how to uh, be gentle about it, but once I ran the Luz and the Halo, I didn't want to pick them up anymore. And I can tell you right now, that's not going to happen with this. I'm still going to run the other one. But this is very much an upgrade in the reel. It's a lot smoother. Of course, when that SG300 was brand new, it was just as smooth. Yeah, you know, it got a little bit of roughness into it over time. Solid year. A lot of, of reel and, you know, crankbait. So all it does is cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve. So, you know, I'll take it down and lubricate it and see if it feels better after that. Is it rough? Nope. It's still smooth. It's just not as smooth as this one. That's the only difference. I think the other difference is this, is fishing in Florida. Live bait. You have definitely better results with live bait. And I think part of it is, and I don't know this for sure, you're going to have to talk to a fish expert, but a lot of times fishing with bass or fishing for bass, it's about aggression. You know, they hit your bait because they don't want it there. And when in Florida, I mean, the territorial thing, forget about it. they got a whole ocean. And they're running in schools often. It's a different kind of fish, of course. But they go for that bait down there because they're hungry and it's food. And if it don't look good, it doesn't smell good, and doesn't taste good, they're probably not going to go for it. i got a little fish. Oh, he shook loose. Thank you for shaking loose. Whereas oftentimes with live bait, that fish swallows it hard. It was pretty hard to get the hook out of them as compared. Oh, got another one. A little one. Let's see it'll shake off. Please shake off. But to see, I would have taken this right here, put a hook right through it, and sent it right back out. Florida. You know, little guy, you almost had that out. If you were just a little more persistent, you would have had that fish, that hook right out of your head. Yeah, this is definitely a very, very nice casting rod. I'm liking it more and more, but right off the bat, I like that reel. I think I want another one. I think I need to get a bigger one for, because I think I'm going to do a little bit more brackish water. You know, and I had a hard time fishing down in, in uh, the, the Bellhaven area of North Carolina. And it was because I was using freshwater type lures. I was going to get nothing. And it wasn't until I went to shrimp that I actually got even a bite. And all I did there was feed the crabs. I think I did a video on that before. But now understanding what I learned from, from Captain Mike, is I think I can go back and uh, give that area a different style of fishing and probably have better results. 
you know. Now I've run that for an hour or two. So I think about this one again. Love it. Jeez. You can hear the reel make a little bit racket. It's it's smooth. A discerning person can feel, you know, it's not quite as smooth as the other one. But I do like the handle on this better, even though it's not as high a uh, quality if you want to go it that way. I think I need to find a rod like that that has a little bit more cork on the handle. Now I noticed that brands like Fenwick are that way, so maybe I just have to find a different brand with the same kind of blank. Wow, that thing casts like crazy, doesn't it? How do you beat that? The ducks are going to try to chase me off this pond, aren't they? You know, actually the Shimano does cast a little better. I'm going farther because I have that spinner on there, it's heavier. But, boy, I tell you what, we're not, we're dealing in, in percentage points, not orders of magnitude. So, anyway, my conclusion is, yeah, they're better. The reel is worth the extra money over the $40 version. The $100 version is worth the extra $60. Um, the rod, for some it will be, for me, maybe. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not going to get rid of this one anytime soon. Not based on what I'm seeing now. Look at that thing. 